Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the Caregiver and Spoonie Podcast. I'm Jordan Banderas and on today's episode we're going to be talking about what it's like being a Spoonie. Now, the Spoonie um, comes from, or where I heard about the Spoonies on the, on the, on the Spoon Theory blog, from Christine Miserandino, she faces lupus or she has lupus and then she explains how she told one of her friends why it's like having a chronic illness. So I'm going to explain this to you and this is actually posted on, on, on the community as well, the whole story. Uh, but I'm going to give you kind of like a graphic description because sometimes even when you read it, uh, you might not really understand it unless you kind of like see it and feel it. That's kind of like what happened to me when I when I first read it, I'm going to be honest. So um, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to use spoons, like real spoons. That way uh, I can explain you what it's like having a chronic illness. Because a spoonie, like either the person that you take care of or your husband, your wife, your kid or somebody you know. It's holding on to this like, like it's it's like it's their life literally in the line. So, um, and also thank you for watching this. All right, let's do this. So when you wake up in the morning, you have um, on the story they use twelve spoons. I'm gonna use fourteen because my wife usually has very long days. So you, she wakes up with fourteen spoons. And that's all she has, all of her energy for the whole day. So let's say she wakes up, she wakes up, she and and she's in pain already. She wakes up in pain and she hasn't even opened her eyes fully yet. She's still in that stage that uh, I'm trying to wake up. And she's already in pain, she's feeling the pain she starts like trying to move even by opening her eyes and that takes one spoon away. Then she has to start thinking like, what am I going to do? I only have enough spoons for on to work until like, or to do anything until like, let's say 3 p.m. But by then I'm still at work. She still has to do other things. So she has to be very careful. So she decides to get up in pain and and says well I'm gonna take a shower because of all the scrubbing everything you know washing your hair especially with women you know it takes a lot of time and effort especially if you have long hair that will take two spoons from her so she's already depleting her spoons and she's not even dressed so she gets dressed, she gets dry, she has to think about her clothes and everything. And that takes, all of that takes another spoon. So she's finally dressed. I'm getting ready for work. And I have to take the dogs. She wants to be a good wife. Like she is a good wife. She wants to be a good wife. She wants to make sure that her husband doesn't feel abandoned or anything like that. Decides to help me with her with my lunch, and that takes another spoon. So uh, it's barely. That's it. This is our day. This is how our day goes. I wake. We wake up very early at two a.m. because I go to the gym, and then she stays in bed until she can. And uh, so. By this time, let's say we'll be like five o'clock a.m. Five a.m. And she already has only ten spoons. So I come back from walking the dogs, and I tell her, like, "No, just sit down, sit down. Try to recharge. You already lost four spoons. Recharge, and then I'll I'll get ready." So I get ready. She's uh, trying to get comfortable but because she's in pain she really can so I leave for work and then somebody calls her and is like oh can you see if you have can you do something for me my wife is nice she says yes that takes another spoon 
and then she something happens the dogs pee or poop inside so she has to clean it that takes another spoon and by this time it's barely 8 a.m. that's how busy her day is and she sees that oh we don't have enough food or whatever Jordan needs something for lunch that will take let's say two spoons because she has to walk around the store looking for whatever she wants because she doesn't like to make a list and I'm not calling her out uh, she comes back from the store she only has five spoons left for the whole day it's not even noon at this point let's say it's like 10 a.m. so she says okay I'm tired I'm in pain I'm going to take a nap. Let's say she takes like one or two hours uh, of a nap. She gets, let's say, three spoons. So she has eight spoons, and let's just say right now it's 12 a.m. I come back, I get up from work at four, so I, I, I come home around, I get to my house at around 4.30, depending on the traffic. So it's, noon she has eight spoons at this point at this point sorry she has to uh, she has to eat well she has to make her own food that will take one spoon oh no the dogs want to go outside i didn't call him the dogs want to go outside that will take two spoons because we have a vision, and those visions are picky on, on where they go. She makes me walk her like a mile before she can go. So that takes two spoons. So we're, go, we're going back to five spoons, and it's only 1 p.m. My wife is a very clean person. She's like, oh no, I forgot to brush my teeth in the morning. I'm going to brush them right now. That will take one spoon. And remember, she made food, but because she had to take the dogs out, she couldn't eat. So she decides to finally eat her, her food. That takes another spoon. She only has three spoons left. I'm not at home right now. It's two o'clock. She only has three spoons. And let's just say because life hits you whenever you don't even want it. The dogs or well, she, or something happens and something gets spilled in the house, which happens a lot. That takes another spoon just for cleaning it. Um somebody comes over and decides to you know like have a chat with my wife and because she's tired and she's listening to somebody else that will take another spoon it's barely four o'clock i would just barely made it out of work she only has one spoon this is this is what she has for me when i come home but I don't care. I like to take care of her. I'm her caregiver. She's my spoonie. And this is what I come home to with only one spoon. And yet, she still loves me and I love her. Now, when I, go, when I come home, she only has one spoon. The dogs see me. The dogs need to go out. So I take, I take them out and she decides to do to do my, my dinner. Even though I, I told her, don't do it. Get some rest. I know you're tired because I know her day. And then boom, she has no spoons because she decided to live her life. She doesn't have any energy left for the next day because sometimes you can carry them over. Sometimes you can carry over. Like remember like the old at and where you will carry over your minutes, almost like that. And, uh, and, and then, um, uh, 
what I do in this situation is that once I see her that she doesn't have any spoons, I tell her, all right, let's go lay down. Let's, let's talk about your day. And, and, and now she has, um, neg she's negative spoons. And, uh, the other thing that's going, that could happen depending on, on, um, whatever you're facing is that you hope and pray sometimes that you can get a good night of sleep so you can get all your all, uh, some of your spoons or or all of your spoons for the next day but let's just say like my wife has um very bad um what's the name of the uh, insomnia very bad insomnia so let's just say that She's negative spoons already. She bar she can barely sleep even with sleeping meds. And she wakes up the next day with only one. Seven spoons to do her whole day again. That's how how the spoon the a spoonie's life is. And this is why I wanted to do it um, in a graphic way because a lot of people don't understand sometimes husbands don't understand it took me a long time to finally understand what my wife was dealing with why when I was coming home she was already laying down it took me a long time to understand and I know that uh, a lot of people are going through the same thing I read stories on Facebook on how um, Spoonie said, like, oh, my husband or wife of so many years is deciding to leave me because um, they're saying that it's, it's because of, of, of my condition or whatever. And it's because they don't understand the spoon theory. They don't understand what the, uh, how you feel that sometimes if you're not able to sleep you only have enough energy to just barely do anything and you need to um save your energy and your spoons because let's say you you guys you already plan for a, a weekend trip uh, with the kids or with the family with your husband or wherever you wherever you go and you want to save all of those spoons for the whole week so you can have a good day, a good time, wherever you decide to go. So people don't understand that. People don't understand that uh, you don't call them because you're tired or you can't really talk to them for a long time because you're tired and you need, and they're actually taking spoons away from you. And a lot of people don't understand. And that's why um, I created this podcast because I want to share stories like this where people can understand that it's not them it, it, and it's not you it's something beyond the two people it's like it's something that you have to take care of your health in this situation and also something that it's debilitating because people don't understand unless they can physically see it if you have a chronic illness, like my wife, she has fibromyalgia and she has a stroke and, and that's the things that happen inside the body. So nobody can see it. So when, the, when, when we tell people like, oh, you, you, uh, that she has a stroke or she has fibromyalgia, they don't really understand because they don't see it. They don't practically see it. Like if she had lost an arm or something, uh, not to offend anybody, but if, if if you lose an arm or a limb or something happens to you, you're burned or, or anything, they see it and they're like, oh, that's what happened and I'm sorry. But when you tell them like, oh, I have fibromyalgia or I have this rare condition like Ehlers Danlos or something like that, they're like, uh, like, what is that? Like, they don't understand, they don't see it. So, but, but and that's why I think that um, stories are powerful because it kind of gives a perspective that other people don't understand. That's why uh, people like to read science fiction and things like that because it kind of gives you like 
it lets you run it lets your imagination run wild so by sharing our stories hopefully people can understand and I, I hope that this um, help you guys understand a little bit more about the spoon theory. If you're a spoonie or a caregiver and you want to share your story, like uh, like I mentioned before, uh, you can send a, you can post it on Facebook. You can send me an email. If you have any ideas for topics, you can um, give me an idea via message. You can email me, and don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and review, and provide any feedback. And I leave you with this, always take care of yourself.